In this next example, we're going to take a look again at um, the NFL ticket price. We've seen this data before. Um, in any case, when you have a frequency table, how you put that data into your calculator and how you use that data um, is a little different, okay? So looking at the table we have, notice we don't have the exact ticket prices for any single NFL team home game, okay? What we have is how many fall within a range of ticket prices. So the way that you handle this um, for the value used for the class, what you end up using is you use the midpoints of the classes. Okay, so in the 0 to 49, the midpoint is 25. In the 50 to 99, it's 75, etc. as you work your way down. And so you use the midpoints of all of the classes as the approximate value for the ticket in that category. Okay, again, some will be a little more, some will be a little less, but in the end, it's gonna roughly balance out to that value. Let you work with the numbers a little bit better. Now, how do we put this data into your calculator? Because as you read this table, what this means is that yes, there's one ticket price that we could list as 25. Um, we could list 75, 13 times because the frequency is 13, but that's really completely unnecessary, okay? We can go back into your calculator, and again, I'm just gonna jot these down. We've done it before, so you're gonna click um, Stat. Then you're gonna choose number one, which is Edit. And you probably have data in there. You just got done taking notes, right? So go up and use your arrows to highlight L1, press Clear, that's Clear, not Delete, so underneath your arrow keys on the far right, press clear and then enter, okay? And what you're going to do is you are going to put um, all of these midpoints into L1, okay? So all of those values put into L1 and then in the frequencies so that they line up the same way they do on the table, put the frequencies in L2. So basically you're creating this table in your calculator. Okay. <clears throat> Once you've got that data in there, then you're going to go back and you're going to hit stat again. You're going to arrow over to calculate, calc. And once again, you're going to choose number one, one variable statistics. Okay. Now, assuming you see the screen come up that says list and then frequency list and then calculate. Okay, when it asks you for the list, that's where you put L1, okay? It should already say L1. When it asks you for the frequency list, well, that's where you put all of those frequencies. You're going to do L2. Now, if you're not sure how to get L2, to get L2, you wanna hit second on your calculator, the little blue button, okay? and then you're gonna press the number two, which is L2, okay, number two. Let's you find that, so in blue, okay? And then go ahead and go to calculate. Now, there are some of you, if you have an older model, TI 83 or 84, um, you're like, there's nothing that says list and frequency list, what am I supposed to do, okay? If you are one of those people, Okay, if you're like, it doesn't say list and it doesn't say frequency list, what am I supposed to do? After you do the step right here that says one variable statistics, okay, after you've done that step, on your calculator screen, it prints one bar stats. What you need to do is then manually type in L1 comma L2. Your L1 is found by doing second and then pressing the number one, okay? The comma is directly above the seven key, okay? So above the seven, it's above the seven button, and then L2 is found by pressing second and then the number two, okay? Um, when you get done, we are finding and interpreting the mean ticket price for NFL home games. This is for all of the NFL teams, so we're going to use the symbol mu. 
and you should end up with a value of 131.25. Now remember, it's gonna appear as X bar on your calculator, okay? X bar and mu are the same thing. It's just a matter of whether we're talking about a sample or a population. This is a population. Okay, so interpret this. So the interpretation would be the average cost for an NFL home game ticket is $131.25. All right, now let's talk about weighted averages for a second, which is actually what we just did. Um, weighted averages are used when more importance or weight needs to be given to something compared to others. And so we did that, like in the table above, we needed to give more weight to the $75 um, price point because there were 13 teams that had that price point. We had to give it more weight. Okay, we had to give less weight to the zero to 49 because there's only one team there. So we only counted that value once. So let me give you kind of the general formula for how we do this. Um, so going back to our good old friend, the summation notation. Okay, so we're going to add up all of the X times W's. I'll tell you what that means in a minute and divide by the sum of all the W's, okay, where X is uh, the data values, and W is the weight, okay, X is the data value, W is the weight. So why would this be important? Well, this is actually how your grade in this particular class is calculated. It is calculated using some weighting. Tests are worth more than homework, for example. And so I always have students say, but I don't understand. Well, this is why, okay? Tests are weighted more than homework. So um, let me show you real quick again how to do this um, by hand, and then I'll show you how you can do it as well on your calculator. So in a particular class, let's see, we've got um, a grade based on homework and exams and a final. Okay, so I'm just gonna summarize those real quick there. Um, so let's talk about X, the data values, okay? The data values are your scores. So you earned 400 out of 450 homework points. If you divide that out, 400 divided by 450, you find out that that is 88.9% of your homework. Okay, that's what your average is on homework. Um, your exam scores, 93, 72, 84, and 76. Go ahead and average those four, okay? It's not gonna take you very long. Um, the average for those four is 81.25%. And so that is your exam average. And you get an 80 on the final. Okay, so those are all of your X's. The W's are the weights. So homework is worth 20%, so we're gonna give that a 0.2. Exams, 60%, 0.6. Final exam, 0.2, okay? So our formula says find the sum of the X W's. So that must mean we need to figure out what all of the X times W's are. So go ahead and multiply 88.9 times 0.2. Okay, you'll get 17.78. Then multiply 81.25 times 0.6. You'll get 48.75. And then multiply 80 times 0.2 and you'll get 16. And then we need to find the sum of those XW's. So add up those three values and we will end up with 82.53. Okay, so that's the sum of the XW's. Um, our formula also says we need the sum of the W's. If you add up these values, you'll find that they add up to one. So in this case, our weighted average is the sum of the XW's divided by the sum of the W's, 82.53 divided by one, 
which is 82.53 would be your weighted average for the course. Okay. All right, how would you do that on a calculator? Okay, how would you do that on a calculator? Well, you put the X values in L1. You put the W values in L2. And then you do a one variable statistics with L1 as your list and your frequency list as L2. And then you look for the mean, which is X bar. Okay, you do still have to calculate though the homework average and the exam average. All right, so what I want you to do is I want you to do this example again, but do version B. So in this case, um, you don't think homework is valuable, so you're not gonna spend very much time on it. You're only gonna earn 250 of those 450 points. Find your average if everything else stays the same, okay? If you got the same test scores, the same final exam score, just uh, change the homework score and see what your new grade will be. All right, hopefully you um, got your new homework average at a 55.6. Um, and when you change that 88.9 in your calculator to a 55.6, you will find out now that your course grade, running the same series of steps that we just did, is a 75.87. Okay, um, just like a side note here, um, you are not expected to do calculations by hand in this course. You are 100% expected to have a TI-83 or 84 calculator, um, or like I said, perhaps an Inspire um, that you need to look up how to use um, because I don't own one of those, um, but you need to be doing the calculations the vast majority of our time is going to be spent on interpreting the results of the calculations, okay? There's technology, obviously it's in your hand, technology that does the math steps for you, but it doesn't do you any good to have your calculator spit out an answer if you don't know what it means in a practical sense, okay? So please don't worry so much about the by hand calculations. You don't have to memorize by hand calculations. Um, I show you what they are for your general knowledge so you understand how things work. Um, I do think that's important, but it's certainly not the focus, all right? So focus mostly on the interpretation and what these numbers mean in the context in which they're presented.